This is the Keith Titanium pour over coffee and tea maker. I've been using it for a few months now, both at home and in the woods, and I'm ready to give you my thoughts on it. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before we begin, I just want to thank Keith Titanium for sending me this item so that I could share it with you. Do you know, when I did the preview here in the woods a few months ago, uh, this was the product that I showed off that brought the most comments in on that video most of them complaining about the price. This is not a cheap product, and just the opposite. This is very expensive. This is ranging close to $200. It better be something special for that price. Well, I'll tell you this. It is something special. It does make a great cup of coffee. Whether it's worth $200, I am going to leave up to you. What I can do, though, is explain to you where I feel the cost is coming from with this. Then, of course, I'll do some demonstrations with it so you can see it in action because I haven't done that on video before. But let's start out by taking some close-ups of what you get for your money and the specifications for it. So again, I'm not trying to justify the price of this thing because honestly, if it hadn't been sent to me, I would not have been able to purchase it. I do like it and it would have gone on my Christmas wish list, but I couldn't justify putting out the money myself, at least on my budget. Maybe you can and I'll let you decide for yourself again if this is something you want to either purchase for yourself, maybe you're going to put it on your Christmas list. So let's just start out and see if I can show you what all goes into this because it really truly is quite the marvel of engineering. So to begin, they did put it in a really nice padded leather case, which seems like a contradiction considering it's an ultralight item, but it does show the attention to quality and detail that comes along with this. So if you're really trying to save some weight, you'll probably ditch the case in favor of some small nylon bag, but maybe you won't. I like carrying it all together in its little, little container. I'll put that aside. All right, so here is everything within itself, all contained within itself. Now, the first thing I'm gonna say is, yes, it's a coffee maker, but it's also a tea maker, so you can lose, use loose leaf tea with this if you wish, and I'll show you how you do that. Or I guess you can make tea from any of the medicinal or plants that you can find out in the woods. So what do you get? Well, start with you get this mug, which is based on a traditional Chinese design, but in this case, it is a two p or sorry, a double wall titanium mug, and you can probably see it's wet inside because I did have a cup of coffee in it just a short while ago before starting this video. I will make another another coffee, another coffee so that you can see it, uh, uh, you know, being used. Um, I really like the shape of this mug. Now it's small. I won't, uh, I won't, you know, disagree. It is a small mug, but it does keep my coffee warm for quite a period of time. And I like just holding on to it. So probably I'd end up making a larger pot of coffee, or maybe I'd make two small cups in this just so that I can get a larger cup or make it a little stronger, closer to maybe like almost espresso or, or mocha pot strength. Any way you want to look at it, it's still a nice cup even if it is a little bit small. Two other components to this are the lid and the lid. I didn't give this a much as much attention as I probably should have in the preview but this is a key component for a couple of things. It does retain heat both in the coffee in the mug but also when the water is going through the pour over that it will help to keep it from uh, cooling off too quickly. And this and the next item I'm laying those down as I go. The next item is the support bracket. So this support bracket is what holds the pour over filter over top of the mug to allow the coffee to run through, the water in the coffee to run through. So it can be used like that. Now it's also nice in that I guess if you're using it at home, what I've often done is when I'm finished running the coffee through, then I'll take this and set it on the counter like this and then set the, oops, not like that though set it on the counter inside of the lid so just so as it dribbles a little bit it's not making a mess on the counter in the kitchen so that's just another way of using the little uh filter holder. And the filter holder, by the way, you can see it stays inside of the lid just nice so you're not going to drop it uh, too easily. Let's focus in on the filter itself because this is where the technology really, really stands out. And I don't even know if I can get that to focus in on those holes. I mean, look how small they are. In fact, the literature that came with this said there are 26,000 laser drilled holes and the shape of each individual hole is funnel shaped so that the hole is larger on the outside 
than it is on the inside. Let, let me see. You can't even see the holes are so small on the inside of this. Ultra, ultra fine. Larger on the outside than they are on the inside. And that had to be some cost put together there. Now, I think what it is that makes this all together, let's just take the leather case out of the mix because you could, you know, say, well, that's just an extra they threw in. It's not really a functional piece of it. And I would agree. But look what you got here. You have a double wall mug. There's a little bit of production cost that goes into this, twice the titanium of a single walled mug, plus the extra work to punch it into shape like that. So that has some uh, extra uh, added cost to it. There is the lid that comes with it, so that is a second piece that has to be manufactured and added to it. There is the filter holder, which is also now a third piece that has to be manufactured and go with it. And finally, there is the super engineered filter itself, really at the heart of the system. So all four of those pieces have extra cost with them and, of course, different machinery, time in the production. And again, I'm not trying to justify the cost of this thing. I'm just trying to maybe explain a little bit about where the cost is coming from in this item. But, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how well it's engineered, how much you're going to pay for this thing. The truth is, if it doesn't make a good cup of coffee, why even bother, right? Well, I'm here to tell you, it does make a good cup of coffee. And I'll demonstrate how I do that in a moment. And there's a couple of things I want to mention about that. If, uh, well, okay, you probably notice right now I'm wearing the fingerless gloves right now and I have a toque on and I have a vest and a jacket because, well, it's right around the freezing mark out here today. And that was part of the reason I waited before bringing this to you because one of the comments that people or questions that people had was, will this cool off too quickly? Will you end up with a cold cup of coffee by the time you're ready to drink it? Um, Yes, a little bit, and that's the best thing I can say. So I haven't been out in sub-freezing temperatures. Like I said, it's right on the freezing mark now. But I have been out in this temperature, and I've used it, and I find that it has not cooled off. And the trick is, well, let me just show you the setup, how you would use this. Let me put it all together. So this is the way that it's intended to be set up as a pour over for use with coffee. And as I mentioned in the preview video, when you put your coffee inside and then you pour your hot water in, there's not a lot of volume, not a lot of space inside of the filter itself. So it does take a few seconds to a minute or two for all the water to drain through. So what I find is that I usually have to come back and do it a couple of times, refill it to allow all the coffee to drain through. But in between filling this up with water, I can put the lid on top top and help retain heat on top of the filter as the coffee is draining through and so it does help there. Still, it, you know, it's still got space, right? It's still exposed to the wind and the air and everything else so you could be losing some heat from the coffee. My experience so far is it's probably just about the perfect drinking temperature when it's finished. But if you are concerned that it's going to be too cold then there is another way of doing this and this is how you would make tea. This will set down inside like this, and the lid can go on top, and that will retain a whole lot of heat over a longer period of time. So you can make your tea that way, it's the way it's intended to be, but here's what I tried. I put the coffee in, poured the water in. Now, mind you, it took a little while for the water to go through so that it got the proper level. Then I added more water again, and I just let it set for about five minutes or so, kind of like you might do with a French press. And then I pulled the filter out, did take some draining for all the coffee or water that was in with the mixed with the coffee. But because the coffee was inside of the filter and down inside of the cup with the hot water, it was steeping like you would with a cup of tea. So that's another way of making coffee, especially in colder temperatures, without it going cold on you. Now, what I haven't done so far is given you the specifications for this unit. So, let's just bring this back up and I have my specifications written out. So, of course, it is made of a titanium, what they refer to as a sanded or bead blasted type of titanium. It is just a 0.6 millimeter thickness. So it's a very thin, very lightweight, but you know, I'm squeezing it now and it's not giving any. So I consider it strong, plenty strong enough. The dimensions for this are, well, it says 3.1 inches tall by 2.9 inches in diameter. Yeah, I guess so. I, you know, that's just about where it is. 79 by 73 millimeters. The capacity inside 
believe it or not, is 7.4 ounces. That's just short of a cup, 220 milliliters. So that's just short of an eight ounce cup. Now I like a bigger cup of coffee most of the time, but you know, I'm not, I don't feel deprived by being able to put 7.4 ounces in it. And here's the kicker, the whole thing minus the leather or a case is 3.8 ounces or 108 grams. So ultra lightweight is part of what you're paying for as well. Again, it's made from titanium, high quality food grade titanium. So yeah, it all together, it uh, comes in a very lightweight and a very compact package. But again, what does that mean if it doesn't make a good cup of coffee? So let's do exactly that. Let's set up and I'll make a cup of coffee with it. All right, let's make some coffee. It's a little later in the afternoon, but still a good time for coffee, right? Oh, this is a good time for coffee. Rampage coffee, so if you're going to use a good coffee maker, you might as well use a good coffee with it, right? Okay, so the roast that I'm using today, and I've experimented with this, and I have found that uh, you can use virtually any grind size, which is unusual for pour over. You want a specific grind size. I've used very, very fine, and I've used very, very coarse. If I put in a very fine coffee, then it does take longer for the water to draw down through it. It does end up in a slightly stronger cup because the drawdown time means more contact time with the coffee and the water. But today I'm using something about French press grind. I'm using three tablespoons, which I know what their weights are. It'll be a little bit strong, but it's the way I like my coffee. Okay, put that aside fresh off of the fire and now the process starts so like all pour overs just give it a little bit right off of the top and what's happening now is the coffee is soaking up some of the water and expanding not a lot but enough so that it slows down the pour as you go through I'm thinking with the steam you're going to have a hard time seeing how it's dripping through uh, there's not much I can do about that. I had said in the earlier view or earlier video that it's almost as if it wants to weep as opposed to uh, pour through. The finer the grind, and that is true, it kind of weeps through those 26,000 little holes. When the grind is coarser like it is now, it tends to come through. I wouldn't say a steady stream, but it's at least moving constantly. And uh, so I suppose you might say that that alone will speed up the brew time and keep things from getting cold. So I'll just work at this for a minute or two. It does take a bit of time. Now I think uh, this is what I mentioned. I'm on a bit of an unsteady log here. Drop the cap on if I want to retain a little bit of heat. Yeah, it's starting to slow down because, of course, the coffee is quite saturated, so it is slowing down as it drips through. I don't know if I'm going to be able to capture that on camera or not. I'll try. Next refill. I'll see if I can focus in a little closer. I think that's the best I'm going to be able to do for you to see how it's running through the top. And I think we're pretty much ready to cap that off and uh, give it a taste test. All right, the first thing I'm going to say to everyone that was concerned about this cooling off too quickly out here. Like I mentioned, it's just right around the freezing point, maybe a couple of degrees above now. It's actually almost a little bit too hot to drink right now. <sighs> nice thing about the double wall titanium mug is that you don't burn your lips or you're less likely. I mean, it's still hot, I'm, I can hold it. I wouldn't be able to hold that if that was single walled. Yeah, it really does make a nice cup of coffee and I'm not sure, well, all the technology, all the engineering that goes into making this uh, coffee maker really pays off in the end product. It really does make a nice cup of coffee. Uh, is it better than the AeroPress? No, I wouldn't say it's better than the AeroPress. The AeroPress is a better dollar value as well. But still, this makes a really nice cup of coffee. Does it justify the price? It does if you have the budget for it. I think that's what I'll say. It does if you have the budget for it. You want the very best coffee maker that you can get your hands on. And this lightweight 
then yeah, this is something to consider for sure. Okay, I think I've gone on long enough about it. So I know that this was the most controversial of all the titanium items I received from Keith, and I expect when you comment to me that it's still not worth it. And that's fine, I understand that. Um, it's not worth it to everybody. It is going to be worth it to some people. I really like it. I can't afford to buy one on my own, but if I could, I would definitely be buying this now that I've tried it. So I guess all I can do is share my experience with you. You'll have to decide for yourself if you want to put down the money. Okay, if you have any comments or any questions, please put them in the comments section below. If you are interested at all in where you can purchase this, I'll be putting the link for this as well as the specifications for this in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. I'm going to drink this while it's still hot.